Hi, I'm Streaky from Streaky.com. Today, I'm going to answer, should I go to music college? I get asked uh, this question quite a lot from people emailing me, wanting to know my view on it. So I thought I'd do a video uh, just explaining what I think. Should you go to music college, music technology college? There's a lot of them around now. It's uh, quite a big area for people when they're leaving school. In the UK, you have to do something when you leave at 16. When I left, you could just leave. But now you have to do something until you're 18. So there's a lot of kind of diploma courses and things that the government will, will subsidise. So you can go to Music Technology College to do that for two years. And then you can go on and do different various different degree courses if that's what you want to follow. I've been asked by people of all ages whether they should go to music college, whether they've been stuck in a job that they aren't enjoying and they, they're looking for a way out and they want to work in music, so is that an option for them? And also people that are, that are younger who are leaving school or you know thinking about going to university and is that a viable thing? Is it worth doing? Uh, so let me answer, I'll answer the first one first if you're older. Now in the music industry, this is all how I see it. This is this it could be different. I don't think it is. This is how I feel is that when you're a bit older, most people that are going in to assist people like myself, uh, mastering engineer, you need to be young because when you get over a certain age, when you get over about 27, you start getting things happening in your life where you'll probably start looking, be getting serious with your partner, uh, probably children. You need to start having some more money coming in. You're going to have pressures of uh, having housing, stuff like that. So a lot of life starts getting involved where you can't take as many risks. Your choices become a little bit slimmer. And so as somebody who would then employ somebody or have somebody in as an intern or or however that works out, I don't really want somebody that's too old because there's going to be a lot of pressure coming in from outside on that person. They're not necessarily going to help me in the way that I want them to help me when they're, when they're fresh and they're new and they're coming in. I want someone who can come in, I can mould them into how, you know, works for me and obviously then helps them to work for them so that as they go further in their career, what they've done with me is then helps them get somewhere. I want it always to be a win-win for me and them. So it's um, important that somebody is young enough so that they don't have this kind of pressure because what happens is it's all about them and what they're going to get out of it. And then so that's a win for them and a loss for me because they're then looking for ways of making money outside of working around with me and on my mission. So as an engineer, that's not good for me because they're coming in to help me. They're not coming in just to sort of drain me of my contacts and my people that I, you know, I know and everything and information. That's no good for me. That doesn't help me as a business owner and as somebody who's, you know, working every day and I need help and I need someone to do the stuff that I can't do. So I, you know, when you get to a certain age, that doesn't work. So if you're later and you go to college in life, when you come out the other end, yeah, you might know a little bit more about engineering, but it's not necessarily going to help you get into a position to then grow. So you're kind of past the point then. So if you're 30, uh, that kind of age, what you need to be doing, my advice to you is, if you need to learn some information, I would take online courses to learn that information. If you don't need to learn information, you already know certain things, which if you're thinking about going to college, you probably don't. But you need to just be getting experience. You need to be working for free for people. Uh, you need to do that structure that I've talked about before, where you work in 25 pound increments and fill your time up outside of your day job. You need to have a day job. That's super important. So you've got some money coming in. And then you you can slowly on the side build this music business side of your life that you want to do by building your brand, building your contacts, and then slowly that grows and then you become someone who's got work coming in and then you can make a living from it and you can bin off the, the day job, so to speak, and then just do your work during the day. If you're in a position at the age of when you're a bit older and you haven't got all these outside pressures of houses and stuff, then fine. You don't really need, you could have a, a nighttime job and spend your whole days, you know, really getting into doing stuff for people and making contacts and getting some work in for during the day. So you kind of switch it up. That's the ideal way because it means you get to work on music eight hours a day and then do a job for sort of four hours in the evening. But you have to have that time to do that. So then reversing back to if you're younger about going to college, I think in the UK, if you're 16 to 18 and you and 
and you don't really know what you want to do and you have an interest in music, I think that's fine to go to a music college because you're going to go and do something else and you're, you, you obviously know that you've got a passion for that and that's something you think you might want to pursue, which is great. And then after that, when you're 18, you can then decide, OK, do I want to go further with this and get a degree so that I've got you know, that rubber stamp, if you like, and I can say I've got a degree. I don't think that's going to help you in employment down the line in the music industry, but it might help you so that, you know, people can see that you actually put in some work and some effort and you are qualified to a certain degree, you know, degree being the operative word there. I think that's kind of how that works. I think if you're kind of not knowing what you want to do and then you just fall into music because it's kind of a passion project, I don't sure that's a great idea really. I think you're kind of wasting your time and you should really just be doing something else and find out what your passion really is. If you're looking for a job in music and you think by going to university that's going to help you get a job, that's not the case at all. I think you could get a job, a studio as an intern or somebody, as I, you know, going back to what I'm saying about somebody older not being able to do this, you've got so much time and energy on your hands when you're younger. You can make the tea and just hang out at studios and work for somebody who you want to be like. So that's a key point here. Find somebody that you like, you want to work for them, volunteer to help them for free because you can because you've got time and you don't need as much money so that you can do your stuff for free help them they're going to help you grow and then you're going to you know grow with them and also you know they're going to help you find different things and you're going to find out what you like about that or if you absolutely hate doing it so you're going to at least get that knowledge and that experience why waste five years at college when you get out at the end you go to a job get some work experience you think well, this isn't for me I hate this when you've spent loads of time doing it and then you feel obliged to do it because you've spent that time where really at that point you're better off just you know switching and pivoting to a different role in another industry or another business so getting experience under your belt as soon as possible is the key to this and I don't think going to university or college is going to help you do that you need to get in at a studio or with you know, there's so many producers and so many engineers now that work from home or work from small studios. The big studio model is kind of dead. So there, there are studios, everyone still needs to record, so there's still studios to work from. But there are plenty and plenty of mix engineers, mastering engineers, recording engineers that could do with a hand just doing stuff around the studio even if that's setting up mics or you know making sure the desk is all zeroed and just whatever you know there's help their social media accounts there's a massive amount of things you can help someone with so going in and just getting that experience helping them you're going to then see how it goes you're going to pick up a few contacts you're going to get a load of knowledge of how it actually works real life which is so much better than going and having a lecture from somebody who's not doing it in real life because they're lecturing so they haven't got a chance to do it in real life. If they are, it's their part-time job because their day job is to lecture. So they've got a certain amount of knowledge, obviously. The best knowledge you're going to get is going straight into the field of battle and seeing how it is out there and seeing how it works and knowing, all right, how does that person get work through the door? How do they deliver that work? How do they get their clients? How do they network? All these things you're going to need to know when you leave college because you're not going to get taught that at college. They're just going to teach you the technical details and the things like that. They're not going to tell you how it is when you get out in the real world and you're battling against people. And you can only do so much training before you get into a fight. So that's kind of, as they say, as Mike Tyson says, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. So that's kind of where we're at. You need to get in the battle as soon as possible. So I hope this has kind of helped in a way. If you're thinking about going to college, then uh, weigh it up really and see which is best. I think even if you are at college, you should be trying to intern for somebody or help somebody out for free because you're going to then get all that experience that I'm talking about. So ask people, just get DM them, get on their case, ask them, say, look, I'll help you for free. I'll do it remotely if it's annoying me coming in. If you haven't got space, I'll do it. You know, I just want to be involved. I want to help you out. People want help. You know, they don't know where to go to get it. So by you asking them, that's the way it works. I personally, back in the day when I started, wrote a letter to every studio every month until one of them had a position open. And then that was Battery, and then I got going, and that got me in some experience. I didn't earn much money at Battery. I was on a salary, but it was super low, really. I was living with my parents, so it was fine. And I had an old Beatle, so it didn't matter. Yeah, hope that's helped. If you like this kind of content, remember to uh, click the like button and subscribe. Uh, I'm here 
most days of the week talking about this kind of thing, hi-fi, music industry, pro audio equipment, reviews, how to get your room sounding better. I also have a newsletter that you can sign up to at streaky.com. Once a month, I send out discounts, giveaways, things that I point you in directions of websites and things I'm watching and stuff that you I can't really do on YouTube. So go there. It's called the Audio Anorax newsletter. It's only once a month. I won't spam you for the rest of the month, promise. Yeah, you'll just get a load of info from me every month for free. So um, I hope you go to streaker.com and sign up. Until next time, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Someone, someone.